This is a five and a half minute training video on latitude by local apparent noon. Local apparent noon is the time in the day when the sun is due south of you at its highest point in the sky. If you measure it, you can do some quick math and determine your latitude. First, some history. If you wanted to sail from the Azores to Charleston back in the day, the best way to do it would be to follow a great circle line, but if you didn't know how to calculate your longitude, that could be dangerous. So what they actually did was they would leave the Azores and sail due south every day calculating their latitude at local apparent noon until they reached the latitude of Charleston. Then they would turn to the west and they would sail along that latitude line measuring their latitude every day to make sure they were on track. They'd know when they got there, when they would run aground, or they could tell they were getting close to land. So let's learn how to calculate it for ourselves. First thing we need to talk about is something called zenith distance. The zenith is the spot that is directly over your head. And now when we do celestial navigation, we measure the distance from the horizon to the sun or the stars, but what we're actually interested in is the zenith distance. And the way to do that is to do 90 minus the measured altitude equals zenith distance. So you measure something with the sextant, 90 minus that is zenith distance. The second thing we need to talk about is angles in the Earth. So imagine taking a lightsaber and slicing the Earth in half so you can see the core. You can relate the North Pole, the equator, and where your ship's position is in a diagram similar to this. Now from the center of the Earth to your ship and then directly overhead is the zenith line. And as you relate that to the equator, it's the latitude. But the sun also has a position on the Earth that can be drawn directly from the center of the Earth through the crust and out to the star. And the distance from the equator to that spot on the Earth directly beneath the sun is something called declination. And that's really just a fancy term for latitude. So we're looking for the latitude of the sun. Think of it this way. If the sun at 6 a.m. Eastern is over Africa, over the course of the day it rotates to the spot directly south of us. And, uh, and that latitude of the sun is equal to declination. You can also relate your position in the equator in terms of latitude, as we know. And then we learned that the zenith distance was the distance from your zenith to the sun. And on the uh, diagram, it looks like this. So you can see clearly that you can relate zenith distance, latitude, and declination at all times. And this applies uh, particularly and only at uh, local apparent noon, which is the time when the sun is directly south of your position at its highest point in the sky. So the zenith distance, the latitude, and the declination are interrelated. Okay, quickly moving along, we need to talk about seasonal differences and locations on the Earth. And the example that we gave was typical for the winter in the United States, where the sun is south of the equator, our latitude is north of the equator, and zenith distance is related. In the summertime, you can draw a picture and see that zenith distance plus declination would be equal to latitude. Um, and then if you're down in the Caribbean, you know, declination and zenith distance are related in a different way. Latitude is equal to declination minus zenith distance. So three examples. If you need to come back to this and pause it, that's fine. But uh, we'll move on to an actual example from November 2011. First thing to do, measure the sun. Apply standard corrections. See that video if you need help. There's uh, a little bit of corrections you need to do. Second thing is create a formula and obtain the declination for the sun. So we measured, uh, we measured the sun and we applied three standard corrections to it and obtained 25 degrees, zero six minutes for this uh, observation. And note that uh, it was when the sun was directly south of us. So for that same time, we're gonna pull out the declination of the sun. It's 21 degrees, 19 minutes south at this point. Don't have to be super accurate with this, but the more accurate, the better. Um, so we're gonna write down that declination. This is where the sun was when it was directly south of us um, and when it was at its highest point in the sky. If you start to see what's happening here, we need to figure out our zenith distance. We said that 90 minus our observed height was zenith distance, so we can, we can do that math if you want. I find it a lot easier to just do 89 minutes, 89 degrees and 60 minutes. Um, it's equal to 90 and it just makes the math a little bit easier. You don't have to, you don't have to carry any ones or anything. But, um, so we obtain a, uh, a zenith distance and we're going to relate that to declination to determine our latitude. So, so 90 minus our observed height is our zenith distance. Zenith distance uh, and declination are related to term latitude. So last up is zenith distance minus declination is latitude because it's winter time in the northern hemisphere. This formula could change. You just have to kind of figure it out. We come up with 43 degrees, 35 minutes. Lo and behold, that's within four minutes or four miles of where our GPS position set, so that's pretty good. We'll talk about accuracy in a minute, but again, we, uh, we took 90 minus our observed height to determine our zenith distance, subtracted our declination, and obtained our latitude. Okay, I don't have any visuals for this section, but I just have a quick note on accuracy and the relative importance of things. Um, some of you may say there's a few more steps to this local apparent noon calculation, and that's true. There's standard corrections and there's some accuracy elements, but I ask yourself to think uh, how accurate do you need to be out at 
in the middle of the ocean, I would say if you're within 15 to 20 nautical miles, you're doing just fine. And the point of this is you want to get out there and learn how to do this and you can work on your accuracy later. So really don't focus on the accuracy so much as uh, learning the process of local apparent noon. If you do it three times, I think you've got it down pat and then you can start focusing on uh, the accuracy of, of index error and uh, the altitude corrections and stuff like that. So really learn the process, teach the process, and then go back and uh, fill in the details later. Thank you.